we did the two-week camp, and I'd only taken two weeks off from Mexico at the point. I, I asked for two weeks off to go do the camp. And so right after the camp, I flew back to Mexico, and they told me they'd call me. And I guess I was back in Mexico about maybe a week or two later, I guess it was. It was 7 a.m. in the morning in Mexico City. My phone rings, and uh, it was Vince McMahon. And he said, hey, I got Vince Russo in here on the speakerphone with me. We have this character for you, and we want to run it by you, see what you think, see if you're comfortable with it. And so Vince says to me, Vince McMahon says to me, he goes, this character, his name is Val Venus, last name is spelled V-E-N-I-S. Now, when he spelled the last name, I was kind of like, mm, that's kind of odd, but all right, whatever. He says, now, Val Venus was a former film star turned pro wrestler. Now, in my head, I'm thinking Paul Kogan, Jesse Ventura, this thing's already been done. You know, it's been beat to death. I mean, how am I going to be able to do a Hollywood character better than those guys and make it different? So in my head, I'm kind of like, eh. And then Vince says, actually, Val Venus was a former adult film star turned pro wrestler. <laughs> Now he's got my attention. Now I'm like, ah, oh, now this shit ain't ever been done before. Yeah. And uh, he basically laid out just the very basics of the character. And he didn't have to twist my arm much after that. <laughs> Working with hot chicks on a huge, massive WWE stage. Are you kidding me? Okay. <laughs> twist my arm a little harder. <laughs> but Vince, being the businessman that he is, and, you know, obviously being cautious about the investment he wants to make, he says, now hold on here. I told him, you know, you don't have to twist my arm anymore. Enough said. He goes, hold on here. Take at least 24 hours and really contemplate this character. I need you to feel comfortable with it. Because if you don't feel comfortable with it on any level, it's not going to work. So it took exactly 24 hours. Called him right back and said, I'm in. <laughs> so uh, you're watching that clock tick down 24 hours. You're hitting yep. that yeah. down over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I already had my in. answer. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the one thing, you know, in, going back in, in retrospect, I look back at the character now and I, I look back at it and I wonder did it really have any kind of longevity to it that was possible? And when you really start to think about the character itself, eh, maybe not the best idea because longevity wasn't there. It's, it's one of those characters that I think you can get a few good years out of it. Just, you know, you just that gatekeeper guy after that. You know but but I mean? the but the timing, the timing that that, that character come along and, and the, the the era that we're in, you know, I mean it just fit. And as long as that oh, yeah. that, that, that time frame was, was working out there, that that that's that had been a timeless type type uh, gimmick for you. Oh, absolutely. It was it was definitely great timing in terms of the attitude era just popping off at the time. Uh they were pushing the envelope on different cultural things that I don't think were really being pushed in any TV yeah. at that point. When any I, when I looked up show. at catering and saw John Wayne Bobbitt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I looked up and I, I thought, I know that guy from somewhere. And then they said, that's John Wayne Bobbitt. I go, oh, my, that's the guy who had the, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Did, did we even bring the wife in, too? You know what? I think he did. He had people. He had somebody with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he did have somebody with him. I will say this about John Wayne Bobbitt: the dumbest human being I've ever met. I just looked at him and thought, "Oh my God, you're famous because you had your dick cut off." Yeah. Oh well, yeah. Well, consider the fact that you never talked to him a blessing because you would have lost several IQ point points at that uh, point in time. <laughs> the dumbest man I've ever spoken to. It was. I couldn't get away from him fast enough. Well, was he there to kind of inform you how, how to react to, to it or what? <laughs> uh, to this day, I still don't know exactly what the purpose was of him being there, other than to say, oh, he saved my wiener by flipping out the light, causing the Japanese guy to miss with the sword. <laughs> I mean, other than that, yeah, it was... Uh, <laughs> But do you know what? Honestly, it was awesome. I mean, to have Joe awesome. Robin on there, yeah, yeah. That, that's a great oh, yeah. call. Yeah, yeah. John Wayne Bobbitt was part of the biggest cliffhanger in television history. That's all. He said. That's his. That's his claim to fame, right there. 